join kids hat family Tofu what are you doing cleaning no you're not you're just piling up the glasses and making a tower out of them uh okay i don't understand why we must do all the cleaning oh dear stop being so lazy tofu i am not being lazy i just think that it is not my job to be cleaning i don't want to get dirty again You know, you sound like the lazy girl. The who? Once upon a time, there lived an old couple. They had two daughters, one each from their previous marriages. But the woman behaved terribly with her husband's daughter. One day, she threw her out of the house. Get out of this house. Go find a wealthy man and find some work in his house. Don't come back till you have earned some money. And so the girl took off. As she walked, she came upon an old dried tree. Girl, where are you going? I am going to look for a wealthy house to work in and earn some money. Okay, but before you go, can you please take off the dry twigs from me? The girl agreed and spent a long time carefully cleaning the tree of its dried sticks and twigs. Once she was done, she continued her journey. As she walked on, she came upon a vineyard. An old wine called out to her. "Go, where are you going? Can you help me?" I am going to look for a wealthy house to work in and earn some money. But yes, I surely can help you before I go. She carefully cleaned the vineyard and helped the old vine. Once she was done, she continued her journey. As she walked on, she saw a broken mud oven. Young girl, what are you doing here? I am on my way for work and earn some money. Before you go, will you help me? The girl agreed and set to work. She cleaned the area around the oven, got some mud ready and fixed the oven as good as new. As she did that, she got mud and dirt all over her, but she didn't mind. Once she was done, she set on her way. As she walked, she came upon an old well. The well called out to her, "Hello, girl. 
Where are you going? I am going in search for work. Work, is it? Okay. Before you go, can you please take out my water and clean me up? The girl happily agreed. She tirelessly emptied the well and cleaned it. Once she was done, she went back on the road. As she walked, a dirty little dog approached her. Help! Can you please help me? I am very dirty. Will you give me a bath, please? Yes, why not? The girl washed the dog and patiently cut its hair. Then she went ahead in search of work. As she walked, she came upon a beautiful house. It belonged to the fairies. She went inside. a place to stay for the night. Can I please stay here? I will leave in the morning. Where are you going? I am going in search of work. If you want to work, then you can work here for a year. You can keep our house clean. It has seven rooms. You will have to clean six of them, but you must never enter the seventh one. The girl agreed. For a whole year, she worked in the fairy's home and did exactly as they told. At the end of the year, she wanted to go home. I want to go back to my village to my parents' house. Okay, but first follow me. She took her to a room full of silver and gold coins. You should sleep here on these silver and gold coins. The coins that get stuck on you will belong to you and you can take them with you. The girl did as told. She spent the night sleeping over the coins. Many gold and silver coins got stuck to her body. When morning came, she said her goodbyes and left for her home. As she was walking, the little dog that she had helped came to her. Come on with me. Come, come with me. The girl went with it. The dog took her to a place with piles of diamonds and pearls. Take as much as you want. The girl took as much as she wanted and left. As she walked, 
she reached the well that she had cleaned. Come girl, you must be thirsty. Have some of my water. Ah, uh, thank you very much. I am very thirsty. The girl satisfied her thirst and walked on. She reached the mud oven that she had fixed. She saw many delicious foods there. The oven offered her to eat whatever she wanted. She ate some and packed some for the rest of her journey. She walked on ahead. Then she reached the vineyard. Dear girl, come have some wine. The girl drank some delicious wine. And walked on towards her home. She now came upon the tree. It was full of delicious fruits. Hello again, dear girl. Here, you can take as much fruit as you want. The girl ate some delicious fruits and packed some to take home with her. Then she got on her way again. Soon she reached home. The house rooster saw her coming and called out. The mistress is home. Look how much gold and gems she's brought with her. This made the mother very angry. What nonsense. This is nothing. Now wait and see how much my daughter will earn. The mother now sent her own daughter to find work and earn a lot of money. The girl started her journey and soon came upon the tree which was once again dry. Girl, where are you going? I am going to look for a wealthy house to work in and earn some money. Okay, but before you go, can you please take off the dry twigs from me? No, I don't want to spoil my soft pretty hands. Picking the dry sticks of you? The girl walked on and came upon the vineyard. The old wine called out to her. Girl, where are you going? Can you help me? I have to go find work and earn money. I have no time to help you. The girl once again went on her way till she came upon the broken mud oven. Dear girl, can you please help me? I don't want to get dirty in the mud. I can't help you. And again the girl refused to help and moved on. She now approached the well. I need help. Can you please clean me? I have to go and find work. Cleaning you will tire me and I don't want to get tired. The girl hurried away from the well. As she did so, the little dirty dog approached her. I've become so dirty. Can you please give me a bath and do something about my hair, please? Ah, no. If I touch you, I will become dirty. Look at those dirty flies in your hair. 
and so the girl ignored the dog's plea and went on her way after some time she came upon the fairy's house she went in i need a place to stay for the night can i stay here where are you going i am going in search of work if you want you can work here for a year there are 7 rooms in this house you will have to clean 6 of them and you must never never enter the 7th room the girl agreed and started working for the fairies for a few days she did as told but one day she decided to sneak into the 7th room the room was dark but she went in anyway As soon as she entered it the door closed behind her and bugs and insects of a variety attacked and bit her everywhere She ran out of the room hurt and bleeding I told you never to enter the 7th room I will not stay here another moment. I am leaving. The girl took to the road running. Her head dirty, hands, legs and face bleeding and bruised. She came upon the little dog and asked for help. Please help me. You never helped me. Why should I help you now? The dog barked at her and chased her away. She ran till she reached the old well. She was thirsty with all the running. She quickly tried to reach in for a cup of water, but the well took away all its waters. When I asked you for help, you refused. I cannot help you now. Go away. Disappointed, the girl went back on the road. She kept walking on till she saw the mud oven. Delicious and tempting foods lay over. Hungry, the little girl reached out to one of the pies to eat it, but the oven started throwing flames out and the girl couldn't reach the food. You refused to help me when I needed your help. I will not help you now. Go away. The girl continued her journey home. She was very thirsty, hungry, and tired. She reached the vineyard hoping she will get some wine. She reached out but the old vine did not let her touch anything the girl was forced to leave the vineyard and go on she now reached the tree it was full of delicious yummy fruits she tried to pluck one hold it you didn't want to spoil your hands when i needed your help You cannot have any of my fruits now. Go away. The girl walked to her home. As she approached the house, the rooster saw her. The mistress has come home covered in blood and dirt. What? How is that possible?
the woman saw her beloved daughter in her poor state. She turned to her husband. I agree, my daughter didn't earn any money. Your daughter earned everything. But the man was so upset with the woman's terrible behavior towards his daughter that he threw her and her lazy daughter out of his house. Hmm, I get a feeling that being lazy can be fun for now but bad for later. I wonder what made you change your mind, Tofu? Well, let's just say all this work around here. Good for others. Tofu, what goes around comes around. If you do good, good will come back to you. And if you do bad, bad will come back to you. What do you mean? Let me tell you the story of a little boy called Pinocchio. Pinocchio Once, there lived an old carpenter called Geppetto. He had no family and was quite lonely. Since he was quite poor, he would find leftover wooden logs and create something new out of them. One night, he found a large wooden log and took it home. Throughout the night, Geppetto worked on the log. And carved a young boy out of it. By the time he was done with it, it was morning. My, my, what a beautiful boy I have made. I wish he had a heart. Then he could be my son and I would call him Pinocchio. A good fairy who knew that Geppetto was a very nice man overheard him and suddenly the wooden boy spoke up. Hello! Geppetto was surprised but overjoyed. He hugged Pinocchio and told him that from that day he was Geppetto's son. Geppetto arranged for Pinocchio to go to school. To buy him his books, he sold off his dear chisel. Now you can go to school like a real boy. One morning, as Pinocchio was going to school, the evil puppet master stopped him. The puppet master wanted to own Pinocchio so he could use him to earn lots of money. Hello Pinocchio, do you want to go to the fun island? It is a wonderful magical place where you can become a real boy. Pinocchio was overjoyed at the idea of going to fun island. He quickly started walking with the puppet master. The good fairy who had been watching over Pinocchio suddenly appeared. Seeing her, the evil puppet master ran away leaving Pinocchio alone. Where are you going Pinocchio? To school, good fairy. Just as Pinocchio said the lie, his wooden nose grew longer. 
That isn't the way to the school, Pinocchio. Afraid that he had been caught, the boy decided to lie again. It is a new route. With the second lie, Pinocchio's nose grew even longer. Now he was very sad and started crying. <laughs> I am sorry. I won't go to the fun island. I will go to school. Seeing how sorry Pinocchio was, the good fairy did her magic and turned his nose into its normal size again. Pinocchio thanked her and dashed off to school. Once he reached school, he told all his friends about the fun island. All his friends decided to go and see this magical place. What they didn't know was that the magic in Fun Island was evil. It turned little boys into donkeys. Oh no! We are in trouble! Everybody, run from here! Just as the boys were figuring a way out of the island, Pinocchio saw Geppetto swimming towards the island. He had been looking out for Pinocchio all day. But to Pinocchio's horror, before Geppetto could reach him, a whale swallowed him up. To save his father, Pinocchio also jumped into the sea and went straight into the whale's stomach. There he saw Geppetto. Pinocchio, my son! Father, are you okay? How will we get out of here now? Well, we must tickle the whale from inside till it throws us out. And they started tickling the whale's stomach. Soon the whale sneezed and threw both of them out. Pinocchio helped his father and all his friends to get back to the village. The good fairy had been watching him all this time. Pinocchio, I have seen what a good boy you have been. Jumping into the sea to save your father like that. Hence, I am giving you a heart and making you a real boy. Pinocchio and Geppetto were overjoyed. They hugged each other and thanked the fairy as Pinocchio really turned into a real boy. Do you still think that doing good is a waste of time, Tofu? Oh no, never dear. From now on, I will always do good to others. Tofu, should we go play? Hi. Hmm, actually my friends are waiting for me. Hey guys. Anyone wants to hear a story? Yes. Yes. yes! yes! Okay. Peacock and the Crane Once upon a time, there was a really beautiful peacock. And he knew that he was beautiful. Look at my tail! Has anyone ever had such a beautiful tail? My feathers are so gorgeous. 
All the animals disliked it when the peacock behaved like that. But he didn't care. One day, he came across a crane. Hello, crane. Hello. Have you seen my feathers and tail? Aren't they beautiful? Yes, it is. I agree. It's the best. Unlike your pale tail. So colorless and boring. I, on the other hand, look like a king. Yes, that may be so. But can your lovely feathers help you to fly? Like I can? High in the sky. Amongst the clouds and the stars. High enough to see the beauty of the earth. I think not. You just stay here, close to the ground, like an ordinary cock. The peacock had nothing to say to the crane. He no longer felt as proud of his feathers as he used to and he realized that there was more to life than just looking beautiful. Hmm, that's a great story, Tia. And I realize I must go apologize to someone. I thought you might feel that way after hearing this story. Well, please excuse me for a moment. was odd, wasn't it, Tia? Yes, it reminds me of Henry, the ghost of the Warren family house. Uh, what is Henry's story? Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful family of the Warrens. Jim and Alice and their two children, Penny and Rick. They had just moved into the new house. Penny and Rick loved the new house. Look Rick, I can see till the lake from my bedroom window. That's awesome, Penny. Come and see. From my window, I can see our garden. I am glad you love your rooms, children. Maybe you can tie a swing for them on the large tree, Jim. The children were excited by the mom's suggestion. They quickly went to the garden and helped their dad tie the swing for them. Later, they came back into the house, had a lovely supper and everybody went to sleep. It must have been a few hours into the night when Rick was awakened by a noise in the garden. He looked out of the window. It was the swing and someone was on it. Who is there? 
Hearing the sound, whoever was on the swing quickly got off and ran away. Rick also went back into his bed and fell asleep. The next morning, the Warrens gathered for breakfast. I saw someone on the swing last night. I couldn't see clearly in the dark, but it was someone shot. What? That's not possible, honey. I'm sure it was the wind playing tricks with you. Oh, mother, it is possible. I did see someone last night. The day wore on and everybody forgot about the person on the swing. Rick and Penny were playing in their room when Penny called. Hey Rick, look, there's someone on the lake. But there was no one that Rick could see. The next morning, the children told their parents about what they saw on the lake. And their parents dismissed their fears yet again. A few days passed. The children kept seeing odd shapes and their parents kept refusing them. One day, Penny found that her maths homework book was missing. Soon Rick found that his favorite cricket bat was missing. But mom, dad, you have to believe us. The grown-ups were about to disagree with Rick and Penny again when suddenly Mrs. Warren's two walk came flying at them. Everybody ducked. Looks like the children were right. There is a ghost in this house. Yes, there is. We must figure out what the ghost wants. And so everybody decided to talk to the ghost. They waited in Penny's room at night, hoping that the ghost will come to take more of her books. And right as they were, the ghost came and went to Penny's desk. Hello, Mr. Ghost. Oh, hello there. Everybody was shocked. The ghost was no more than a boy. How can we help you? Help me? Really? Yes, we would love to. That would be nice. I am stuck here like a ghost because I died before my last wish was not fulfilled. Really? Tell us, please. How can we help? My name is Henry. I was a very good student and I loved math. In the last week of my life, I had written a maths exam. I knew I would top the class, but before the teacher could declare my results, I died. I want to make my mother proud of me. I wish the teacher would check my test paper and she still keeps in her desk and tells my mother the score. As Jim and Alice watched Henry's ghost go out of the window, they decided to help him out.
The next morning they inquired about Henry's school and teacher. Once they had found her, they went to her and requested her to please check his paper. Just as Henry had said, he scored the highest in class. Next, we must find Henry's mother. Let us talk to the principal. And so the Warrens got Henry's mother's address from the principal. They set off towards this address. They found Henry's mom and explained their case to her. Is my Henry all right? Yes, ma'am. And he loves doing math. And he wanted you to have this. My son Henry, he stood fast in class again. I am so happy. Suddenly, Henry appeared in front of her mother. Mother, I am so happy to see you. I kept my promise, mom. I came first in class. All I wanted was for you to know that I came first. I feel free to go now. Henry, my son, I will always be proud of you. Jim, Alice, Rick and Penny. I will never forget this. Thank you so, so much. As everyone watched, Henry turned into a bright light and vanished. The Warrens returned to their home, never to be disturbed by any ghosts again. Wow, Tia! I never knew that there can be some good ghosts too. Well, Tofu, like there are good people and bad people in this world, there are good and bad ghosts too. You know, I have decided what I want to become for Halloween this week. Let me guess. Henry? Absolutely. How did you know, Tia? I just did. Now come on, let's go home before the cold wind comes back. Mrs. Farrow has gone mad. How does she think that I can help her? Why? What does she want? She wants me to help her pick the leaves from her lawn. How can I do that? I am just a kid. It is something that grown-ups do. Yes, grown-ups and Pocahontas. Pocahontas Once upon a time, an 11-year-old girl called Matauka lived with her tribe, the Pohatans. Matauka was always cheerful and a playful person. Hence people lovingly called her Pocahontas. One day in the year 1607, many English ships arrived on the shores where the tribe settled.
the Englishmen founded a colony called Jamestown there. One day she met Captain John Smith and took a liking to him immediately. Hello, what are you doing here in the colony? I know the winters can be hard, so I have brought supplies for the settlers. There's food and some warm clothes. That is very kind of you. Thank you. This went on for an entire year. Pocahontas helped the Englishmen build their colony and settle there. But the tribesmen grew weary of the settlers. We should ask them to leave our lands immediately. This has gone on too long. We should reason with Captain John Smith. I think he is a powerful and kind wizard. I say we drive them out of here. Give me a chance. Let me talk to them. They know I am a friend. Okay, Pocahontas. Tell the settlers to provide the tribe with guns in exchange of food and supplies we have been providing them. The tribe wants you to supply them with guns in exchange of the provisions that they send. That is not possible. With both sides adamant about their decisions, there wasn't much to be done. But Pocahontas did not give up. She continued to keep the peace between the two sides. Her patience and thoughtfulness kept the two from going on an immediate war against each other. One day, Pocahontas learnt that John Smith died in an explosion. She was very sad to know this and stopped visiting the colony. With Captain John Smith gone, I am in charge. I am tired of these fights with the tribe. I say we kidnap Pocahontas and get leverage against the tribe chief. Orders given by the new captain were carried out. Pocahontas was kidnapped and put on a ship immediately. There she met John Rolfe. She converted to Christianity and married Rolfe. Soon they had a son. Few years later, Pocahontas travelled to London. There she met Captain John Smith. I thought you were dead. I am so happy to see you alive and well. John Smith and Pocahontas spent the rest of the evening talking about past times. 
A few days later, she contracted smallpox and died in London at the age of 22. When John Smith found out about her death, he said, Pocahontas saved the colony from famine, confusion and eminent death. She was 11 years old when she started helping the colony, Tia. Yes, I think there is no age for helping someone. You can do it any time. Let me go and help Mrs. Farrow now. Okay, see you later then. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.